we are in Waterton. This is the uh, flow charging station and the Kona EV is plugged in. Uh, when I plugged in, I noticed that this particular CCS plug is covered in cobwebs. Um, looks like it's probably not been in use for a while and I did see where the cobwebs came from. Say hello to this little guy. I just want to hurt. Good morning everyone, welcome to Ready Steady Charge. My name is Solomon and today we are going on a very long road trip. We're going from Edmonton all the way to Waterton and coming all the way back. So it's going to be just over 1000 kilometers in one day. There are two purposes to the trip today. One of which is to do a bit of a tour to see all the different DC fast chargers that are available in Alberta. Now. For this video, I am going to focus more on the trip and uh, the driving and the charging. I'm going to make a separate video going into details about each charging station type and uh, how to operate them and the pros and cons of each one. So make sure you're subscribed for that. The second purpose of this trip is to juxtapose what it's like to have a faster charging network to rely on uh, versus a slow one. So I want to compare this trip to our 3000 kilometer road trip to Prince Rupert. And on that trip, we rely mostly on 25 kilowatt chargers and those, they're very slow. So this trip, we're gonna have a lot of 50 kilowatt chargers and we're going to have a few 150 and 350 kilowatt chargers. So those are going to make charging a lot faster and it's gonna make the trip go by a lot quicker. Now, needless to say, we're doing summer driving, so I'm going to pay attention to the battery temperature uh, throughout the trip. So we're starting with 27 degrees Celsius in the battery. That's pretty warm, and uh, that's because this is the ambient temperature. Uh, it's summertime, and it's quite warm, so we're definitely not going to get any cold gating. The starting state of charge is 99% battery, basically a full battery. And our first destination is Cross Iron Mill, which is about 283 kilometers south of Edmonton. Um, it's going to take about, I think, two hours and 30 minutes. So let's get started and we'll see you in Cross Iron Mill. Welcome to Cross Iron Mill. We are here. So it uh, was a two hour and 40 something minute drive uh, from Edmonton all the way here. Uh, 200, about 280 kilometers. So it's a bit of a long stretch. So we're here, uh, we're gonna plug in and charge. So we have arrived with 21% battery. Uh, our consumption is 5.4 kilometers per kilowatt hour. That's pretty good. So, um, I actually thought the consumption would be a little bit higher to arrive with a little less battery, but 21% is good. And uh, when we plug in, it's going to be a good speed. So our battery temperature is 31 degrees Celsius when we arrived. That's a pretty warm battery, which means once we plug in, the charging speed should be pretty high. Now, how long do I have to stay here? Or how long do I have to stay here and charge? To answer that question, you need to ask yourself, how do you drive an EV fast? And that would, uh, that would mean, how do you charge fast? So it really comes down to where is it more worth it for you to wait? I am currently plugged into a really fast charging station, 350 kilowatt Petro Canada charging station. It's so fast, it's the fastest, in fact. So it's worth it more to wait here until the charging speed drops. So typically with the Hyundai Kona EV, between 0 to 57% battery, you're going to get 
uh, 70 something kilowatts as long as your battery is warm enough and today the battery is way more than warm enough so that's not an issue um, and from 57% to about 74 to 76% the charging speed is 57 kilowatts and the charging speed usually throttles down at about 74 to 76 percent battery and what that means is it will go down to about 35 kilowatts so the next stop i'm going to go to is claire's home which is 150 kilometers away which is not that far i don't need that much battery probably about 40 to 50 percent battery is is enough but uh the charging station at claire's home is a 50 kilowatt charging station which means it's worth it more to wait here while I'm on 70 kilowatts versus go over there and charge for longer, which is you know, a maximum of 50 kilowatts. So really to drive an EV fast means you have to charge fast. And to charge fast, you need to know where is it worth it more to wait. Comparing the two charging stations, this 350 kilowatt Petro Canada versus the Flow 50 kilowatt charger, it's worth it more to wait here. And I'm going to charge until 74 to 76 percent battery whenever the charging speed goes down. And I'm going to unplug and go to Clarison. And if you're wondering about cost, well, the cost is actually the same between a Petro Canada charging station and a Flow charging station. The Petro Canada station charges you about 33 cents per minute, and the Flow charger charges you $20 per hour. If you do the math, uh, it's basically the same cost. So if you wait an hour here versus an hour there, it's the same cost. But it charges faster here, so it's cheaper to stay here. Okay, we've been charging for a while. It's only been about 15 minutes of charging and we're almost at 50% battery. So if I'm really in a rush, I'm good to go. Um, but like I said, it's worth it more to wait here. So we're gonna wait until the charging speed drops. Um, it's reached 70 something kilowatts, which is great. The battery temperature is getting a bit warmer and warmer. Uh, it is right now at 37 degrees Celsius. So, 37 to 38 degrees Celsius, I find, is when the battery cooling actually kicks in. So any temperature below that, I don't hear the, the cooling system running. Okay, we have been here for 42 minutes. Uh, we're done charging. Charging speed had dropped, so we're good to go. Total cost is uh, $13.86. All right, we're gonna unplug and uh, let's go. Welcome everyone to Claire's home. We are at the Flow charging station. This is a 50 kilowatt charging station and we're gonna plug in fairly soon here. So we arrived with 43% battery, which is pretty good. The consumption was 5.7 kilometers per kilowatt hour. And uh, this is a little bit better than before, which is uh, welcome news. Um, the battery temperature is still quite hot. It's uh, 34 degrees, but it's good. Hot battery right now gets us good charging speed. So let's plug in and get charging. Okay, as you can see, I just plugged in and uh, we're charging. I'm probably gonna be here for about 30 minutes. I'm gonna go back up to about 74% battery where the charging speed goes down. Uh, then we'll have more than enough to get to Waterton. Uh, Let's take a look at the surroundings. Now, today's weather is not great because there's a lot of smoke in the air. This smoke came from uh, British Columbia and there's uh, there are some forest fires that's happening in BC and the wind carries the smoke over to Alberta. So I guess not the best day for sightseeing, but uh, we're not doing sightseeing really. We're just driving and charging, driving and charging and taking a look at all the charging stations. 
And by the way, there's a level 2 charging station here as well if you're staying in Claire's home for a while. Uh, yeah, both of these are paid, so I believe the level 2 charger is uh, $2 an hour and the level 3 charger is $20 an hour. We've been charging for a little bit, about 15 minutes. Uh, the state of charge of the battery has reached 66%. And uh, charging speed is really good because, well, the battery is quite warm. So right now we're sitting at 46 kilowatts, which is about as fast as this particular charging station can give at this moment. Um, the temperature of the battery is hovering around 37 to 38 degrees Celsius. Um, that's quite appropriate for the ambient temperature. Right now outside it's 31 degrees Celsius. So it's pretty warm outside, so the battery is pretty warm. And plus it's charging, so it's going to get a bit more heat and uh, be a warmer compared to the ambient temperature. So like I said before, the battery cooling system turns on at around 37 to 38 degrees in the battery. So right now it is on. From what I've seen before, if you're charging off of a 50 kilowatt charger, it looks like the cooling will not let the battery temperature rise above 38 degrees. Um, I have seen once when I was charging at a 350 kilowatt charger, actually the same Petro Canada one, but on a different day, where while the battery is charging really fast, like 75 kilowatts, it's reached 41 degrees Celsius. And uh, the battery's cooling system is working, and the battery's charging speed did not go down when it is at 41 degrees Celsius. So I think at 41 degrees Celsius, it's not, it had not reached the temperature for thermal throttling. So that's where the battery becomes too hot and uh, the charging speed have to be reduced to compensate and make sure the battery is not overheating. So it haven't happened yet at 41 degrees Celsius for the Kona EV. So I think that's pretty good. Um, having ambient temperature that goes anywhere close to 40 degrees it's pretty rare here. Um, close to 30 degrees, yeah, that's fairly common. So it's good to know that the battery doesn't really need cooling until 37 to 38 degrees Celsius. And that's really hard to get with just ambient temperature. Alrighty, so I just unplugged and uh, we've charged to 78%. Um, the throttling of the charging speed actually happened at around 77% this time. So as soon as the speed dropped, I went and unplugged it. So next stop is Waterton, the uh, destination, well, the turnaround point. We'll go to Waterton and then we'll turn back. So Waterton also has a flow um, 50 kilowatt level 3 charger. Uh, we're going to go there and charge. And uh, the distance from here, Claire's home, to there, Waterton is 140 something kilometers. So again, another one and a half hours. So we will see you there. We have arrived in Waterton. This is the uh, this is the Waterton village, so the town. Um, we have some uh, charging stations here, and uh, you know there are a couple of level two chargers, and there's one flow 50 kilowatt level three charger. So as you can see, this town is packed. Um, and what happens when uh, a place is packed with cars is um, EV dedicated parking spots are going to be taken up and it's called ICED, stands for uh, internal combustion engine. So I'm going to see if this flow charger has been ICED. It's very possible that it has been ICED, so um, let's see what happens. Now if the you know, parking spot for the charging station is blocked and I can't get to it, um, that's okay, I'll just turn back. The nearest charging station, I guess the level 3 charging station, is in Pincher Creek, which is uh, not that far away. Currently I am, in terms of the battery at least, I'm at 44% uh, battery. 
and that's more than enough to get to Pincher Creek. So if, you know, the spots gets iced, I still have enough juice to get out of here. Uh, we're almost there. Let's see what happens. Okay, there's the flow charger. Let's turn left. Alright, well, it looks like it has not been iced. So, I am lucky. Here we are. We are here in Waterton, uh, right in front of the flow charger, so I'm gonna go plug in. Now we've arrived with 43% battery and uh, consumption is 5.7 kilometers per kilowatt hour, which is pretty good. Um, I wanted to do some filming outside, but it's pretty loud outside. Maybe I'll do a little bit of filming outside, but I'm gonna go plug in first and I'll come back and uh, talk to you about how this trip is going so far. so we're plugged in and charging. Um, it looks like this charging station has not been used for a long time. I don't know if you can see it, it's full of cobwebs. So it looks like a spider has made this place its home and uh, yeah, I might be the first one to have used it. Oh, I actually see the spider. There it is. Sorry, buddy. I gotta use the charging station. So this is another parking lot. It's actually pretty close to uh, pretty close to where the flow charger is. The flow charger is right over there. So that's where the cone is parked. Um, we got some level two chargers here. So uh, two Tesla destination chargers and two J7072s. Again, it's uh, good to see that these spots are not iced. Um, let's go back to the Kona. I only needed to stay here for half an hour. I think we're almost done and uh, I still wanted to have some food so let's go back. I had a bit of a snack, um, actually I had a sandwich so we're almost done charging. Uh, the state of charge right now is at 75%. Um, I think I'm gonna let it go up to 80%, gonna go for a bathroom break and then come back and we'll start driving. So the next charging stop um, because there's so many choices between here and Calgary, I think I'm gonna go back to uh, Claire's home and charge there because the charging station is right next to the road, like exactly next to the road. So I will spend a lot less time going to the charging station and coming back. Now, where I'm intending to go is actually to go charge at uh, Deerfoot Mall in Calgary. So there is a Electrify Canada there it's uh, also you know up to 350 kilowatts there are a couple of 150 kilowatts and there's one 350 kilowatts it doesn't matter which one i'm on the kona can only take about 79. so i wanted to go there but it would take about i would say 78 percent battery to get there and if the consumption is still 5.5 kilometers per kilowatt hour so what that means is I have two choices. One is to wait here for a bit longer. So let's say charge to 90% just to be safe so that I have some buffer. Or I unplug as soon as the charging speed drops, which is around 70, 76%. So what do I want to do? Now the money saving way would be to unplug about now and uh, to just go to Claire's home plug in for about 10 minutes and then keep going because if I stay here when the charging speed is low I'm going to be getting less energy per minute while paying the same price 
Now, the savings that I make from doing this is probably like $1 or $2 or something. Is it that significant? Not really. But I want to do things as efficiently and as quickly as possible. That means waiting here while the charging speed is low. Um, it's going to take more time to charge the same amount of uh, battery percentage as if I drive for a bit, bring the state of charge down, and then plug in, then I'll get close to 50 kilowatts. Because right now, okay, actually the charging speed has dropped. Uh, it is right now at uh, 35 kilowatts. So if I keep going, it will eventually drop to 24 kilowatts. And that's a lot slower than 50 kilowatts. In fact, half the speed as 50 kilowatts. So I will unplug now. I will drive to Claire's home, just plug in for about 10 minutes, and then keep going to Deerfoot Mall. And uh, while I'm there, uh, basically I would arrive with around, let's say 15% battery. So the state of charge will be low. And then when I plug in, the charging speed will be high. So we'll see you there. So we've driven for a while. Uh, we're about 75 kilometers away from uh, Waterton. So yeah, we've driven for almost an hour. And what I discovered was basically the consumption is really low. It's at 7.6 kilometers per kilowatt hour. So I did some calculation. That means I should have around uh, 10 to 15 percent left if I go straight for Calgary, if I go straight for Deerfoot Mall. So I'm going to skip Claire's home. Um, why is the consumption so much better now? Uh, I think basically what that means is I have gone uphill when I'm going south. So when I'm going towards Waterton, it's a whole bunch of uphills. And now when I'm going away from Waterton, heading north, we're going downhill so that's my explanation for the consumption being so low because previously when i'm going to waterton it's 5.4 kilometers per kilowatt hour and now when i'm going the reverse it's 7. Point, well 7.6 7.5 so consumption is really good now and uh, i think if i go straight for calgary uh, i'm gonna make it there with about uh, 12 to 15 percent battery which is what i want uh, then when I plug into the Electrify Canada charging station, uh, I should get a fairly good speed. So let's do that. Welcome to Calgary. This is Deerfoot Mall. All around us. Alright, so welcome to Calgary. Uh, this is the Electrify Canada charging station. Uh, this one is really nice because there are four charging stalls in total. And uh, let me just go through these with you. So let's start here. First stall, we have a 150 kilowatt CCS as well as a 50 kilowatt Chanamo. And the two in the middle, so the one I'm parked right next to, so that one, as well as this one, we have 150 kilowatt CCS. Um, and then there's the last one, this is the powerful one. This is a 350 kilowatt CCS. So given that my vehicle can only take up to 79 kilowatts, uh, there's no need to try the 350 kilowatt. Uh, 150 will do just fine. So let's plug in and get charging. Um, I arrived with 21% battery and uh, the consumption ended up being 6.8 kilometers per kilowatt hour, which is great. A lot better than what I had coming here. Well, what I had going you know, to Waterton. So that was 5.4, but now we got 6.8 kilometers per kilowatt hour, which means 
um, I ended up with more battery than I thought. So skipping uh, Claire's home was a good decision because we didn't really need to charge there. So let's plug in. All right, we just plugged in. Um, I haven't taken a look at the uh, charging speed just yet. Uh, let's come and take a look here. Huh, it says 33 kilowatts. That does not seem right. Okay, I have waited for a little bit um, and the charging speed it, it has still not gone up. So uh, I think I'm going to just change the uh, charging stall here and see if that will give me a better speed. Uh, one of the theories I have of why this could be happening is uh, right now ambient temperature is 33 degrees. Um, I feel like perhaps if the uh, you know, the plug handle. So a lot of times this is where the temperature sensor is. So if that temperature sensor reaches a certain temperature, it will throttle the charging speed to make sure the you know, charging station doesn't overheat. So um, I'm gonna change stalls and see what happens. All right, that's more like it. 73 kilowatts. So I move stalls. Um, I, I move to the one that has the uh, CCS and the channel. So, yeah, not too sure why when I was plugged into this one. Not too sure why this one's giving me 36 kilowatts and uh, this one's giving me uh, 70, 72. Um, but, you know, sometimes this can happen. For some reason, one charging stall doesn't want to give you high speed. If you have other stalls, you can change stalls and uh, get better speed. So, see, 73. So initially, um, I was, uh, I moved my vehicle here. So initially I moved my vehicle here. Um, for some reason, this particular car reader just wouldn't work. Um, I had trouble with, uh, you know, other Electrify Canada car readers specifically the one in Canmore as well. Um, I don't know, maybe these ones have some inherent trouble. So this, the car reader on this one wouldn't work for me. Um, but thankfully it worked on this one, which is great. So yeah, we're getting pretty good charging speed. All right, I'm gonna have uh, dinner, I guess it's 7 p.m. Um, I'm happy that when I move the vehicle, this one's giving me the proper speed, 73 kilowatts. So I'm gonna be here for about 35 minutes and uh, that will get me to about 80%. So my plan is to charge 80% and then head north, leave Calgary. Um, yeah, once I'm done charging or close to done charging, I'm gonna tell you what my next steps are. Well, we're still charging. Uh, it's only been about 11 minutes since we started charging, so there's another 24 minutes to go. While I wait, I'm having some dinner. So, salad is for dinner. Um, trying to be healthy, and uh, I'm using chopsticks to have my salad. Apparently chopsticks work pretty well as a salad. Um, don't know if you've ever seen this, but uh, yeah, chopsticks work very well. Yeah, it works. I just unplugged from the Electrify Canada charging station and we charged to 80% battery. So what's the next thing I want to do? There are two charging stations I still want to visit. So one of them is brand new, absolutely new, and it's just recently been tested by public members. I think it might be open. It's in Carstairs, which is about 30 minute drive north of Calgary. So I'm gonna take a look and see if those charging stations are working. If they're working, I'm just gonna try them out. I'm not gonna stay there and charge because right now with 80% state of charge, um, we don't need to charge there. And after that, I was actually planning on charging in uh, Red Deer uh, at the Shell gas station. So they have a 50 kilowatt charger there. 
So I want to see first if the car stairs uh, charging station is working and uh, then I'll go to Red Deer and charge and Red Deer will be my final charging stop before I get to Edmonton. So let's go. Welcome to Car Stairs. Um, it's a 30 minute drive from Calgary. Um, we arrived with 69% battery and uh, the consumption is 6.5 kilometers per kilowatt hours, which is pretty good. Uh, now, these are brand spanking new uh, charging stations. Apparently, they can go up to 100 kilowatts. So I just plugged in and uh, charging speed is not great. So this particular charging station has a weird quirk, which is uh, the charging station ramps up really slowly. So when I first plugged in, it was 9 kilowatts and then 17 and then 23 and now it's going up. So this looks more normal. Um, the Kona EV can take uh, 57 kilowatt maximum at this stage, but once it gets to 74, um, the charging speed will ramp down to 35 kilowatts. So this is closer to you know what is normal for a 50 kilowatt charger. But this one is capable of charging maybe up to 100. So we'll see what we get. Because this is new and then almost no one has used this yet, I, I'm not sure what to expect. But with a very slow ramp up, it's actually kind of bad for the for the end user because you end up paying more so slower charging speed means you get less energy per minute and you're charged 33 cents per minute so that would mean if it ramps up slowly you need to stay here a little longer which means you end up paying more money I'm not too sure why the ramp up is so slow see now this is normal 53 kilowatts at 72 percent on the Kona EV is normal I just don't know why it ramps up so slowly but anyway, looks like the charging station works. 57, that's normal. I don't expect this to go up anymore. So the charging station clearly is capable of over 50 kilowatts. Uh, it's probably 100 kilowatts. But it just, you know, the charging speed increases very slowly. So next stop is Red Deer. Uh, do I really need to charge it to make it all the way to Edmonton? Um, probably not. I can probably make it there on the battery energy that I have but I want to have a little bit of a buffer. So let's go to Red Deer. Welcome to Red Deer. This is the gasoline alley. And this is the Shell charging station. So this is a 50 kilowatt DC fast charger. And as you can see, I'm plugged in and charging. So this one um, has to be activated with the Green Lot app. And unfortunately, the Green Lot app is very, well, it's not very good. Um, <laughs> it wasn't very clear whether or not I activated the charging station. Um, turns out I did and it, stopped, it started charging when the app didn't show that it's been activated. So it's all kind of weird, but it's charging, so that's great. So I've arrived in Red Deer with a 54% battery, and uh, basically the consumption is 6.3, which is still pretty good. Um, did I really have to charge here? Um, not really. According to my calculations, I only need about 45% to get to Edmonton. But, uh, well, I would only have about 9% buffer, which is a little bit, you know, uncomfortable. So I'm going to charge here, and uh, again, I'm going to charge until the charging speed drops, which is around 74%. And uh, I thought it would be nice to show you kind of what is around here. So this is a pretty big Shell gas station. Um, we have a Shell convenience store over there, and then over there is a McDonald's. So you got your bathroom, you got your food and drinks. So this is actually a pretty good place to take a pit stop. 
We are done charging, basically. It's at 78%. Uh, the charging speed has throttled down already, so we're just gonna stop the charging session here. All right, and we're ready to go to Edmonton. Final stop. Oh boy, we made it back. Made it back to Edmonton. Oh, it's a long trip, very long trip. You know, I started at uh, 7.30 a.m. and I arrived here at 11.30 p.m. So about, you know, 16 hours. Oh, long day. So the last stretch, from Red Deer to Edmonton, um, we have a consumption of uh, 6.5 kilometers per kilowatt hour, and for the entire trip, we have a consumption of 6.0 kilometers per kilowatt hour, which is really good. That's probably because of the warm weather and uh, good road conditions without rain or anything. So that's really good. Um, the total distance is over 1,100 kilometers. Oh, this is the most I have ever driven in a single day. So needless to say, I'm pretty tired. So the trip was very long, 16 hours. Now I could have made it a little bit shorter, uh, maybe even significantly shorter, if not for two things. So number one is I've charged way more than I need. So, you know, I arrived with 43% battery, so clearly I've charged way too much. But under the current situation in Alberta, where charging stations are not everywhere, uh, it's not a bad idea to actually charge more than you need. In case of, say, a charger being occupied or a charger being broken, having extra power in your battery will give you extra range and you can go a little further, find another charging station, or what have you. Uh, so charging a little more than you need is not a bad idea. But if I only left myself, say, 5% or 10% buffer, then I could have arrived faster. The other part of why the trip took so long is I wanted to visit all the different types of uh, DC fast chargers or level 3 chargers and uh, I didn't want to revisit the same one on my way back from Waterton to Edmonton. So what that means is I visited uh, Carstairs, uh, which is uh, kind of out of the way, and also Red Deer. So if I stuck with the same charging stations uh, on my way there and back, then the trip would have been a little faster. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. It was a very long day for me. Uh, all 16 hours of it. I will release another video that will have a lot more detail about the different types of DC fast chargers or level 3 chargers here in Alberta. I will go into uh, how to use them, how to activate them, uh, if they have any quirks, their distribution, the pros and cons, and the cost, all of that. So make sure you're subscribed for that video. And thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Solomon. And as always, see you on the next one.